Hello folks, welcome back. Pastor Bob from Place of Refuge. The message I got today, we're going to be in the beginning stages of uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. And the title is Prove and Reprove All Things. Now let me give you a little disclosure here before we start. There's a lot of things going on, you know, should I take the inoculation, should I do this, and you know, what about voting, and all this other stuff. And so what I've done is I'm going to have some information here to maybe point you in the direction that maybe spiritually it will help you discern. So we're going to start with Ephesians 5, verses 11 through 14. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it's a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever does manifest is light. And verse 14, Wherefore he say, Awaketh thou sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. All right, so what's the word fellowship? Well, this one here, usually here at Koinonio, but this one is, is almost like that. And it means to become a partner together with others, all right, or to have fellowship with a thing, partake, or to be a partaker, or share together with others, or a fellow or joint partaker. So that kind of gives you the background that, you know, if we're going to be involved in something, we're going to have fellowship or be a partaker of that. Maybe we did it unknowingly, and that's what the whole jest is about this message. What's well, one the unfruitful works? Well, the unfruitful is obviously it's not yielding what is ought to be yield, unprofitable, producing very simply bad fruit. All right, the unfruitful works or the labor in the business. All right, now I broke this down about the works, and it says of the works of men in reference to right and wrong, or judged by the moral law, the precepts of the gospel, the person who has no faith demonstrates by his evil works his separation from God, which is true. That's how people are. You're either with God or not. And then the works of darkness. Okay, it's a word called Scot scotus, and some people say scotus. It's S-K-O-T-O-S, and that's fine. It's not, you know, no big deal how you pronounce it. It's a, it's a metaphoric term, and it means for ignorance respecting divine things and human duty. And accompanying ungodliness, and you see it starts to get a little stronger, and immorality together with their, their cons, uh, consequent misery in hell. So, and then here's another one from my word Greek dictionary. The works of darkness, such works are as usually practiced by men, here we go, in darkness or secretly, which is used here. So let me read that verse again. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But what? Rather, reprove them. Okay, which brings us to the word reprove. Now, what's that mean? The word reprove here is called Milan, and it means to a greater degree, more willingly. Excuse me, the word rather. I wanted to start with that. Rather means to a greater degree, or more willingly, or more readily, sooner. So it's used in other scriptures for much more, it is better. How much more? So how much more? Let's use that one. How much more to reprove? All right. That means you're going to convict, refute, confute, to find one's fault with, with something. Okay. You're going to be fault with. You're going to try to correct, to expose. Now, that's a very key word. Some of your Bibles will say, have no you know, fellowship with the deeds of darkness, but rather expose them, which is very, it's, it's a correct term because in the Greek, that's what it means, to expose. Then it says this, demand an explanation. It's wrong, you know, it's not wrong to question things that maybe you're going to get involved in. Find out about it. Show to be wrong. And then it says admonish. Now, it says this, and it's, it's a strong one, but I, I want to clarify it. To prove one in the wrong and thus to shame him. All right, now I'm going to caution you on that. Um, I would add to be very Christ-like. When you and I want to talk to people, we don't want to tick them off right away, or we'll never get to, to work with them and try to tell them the truth. So we don't want to embarrass them, and so it would be, you know, like the Bible says, what? Wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. All right. First Thessalonians 5.21, I, I joint that with this prove. It says, prove all things. If you remember last week, we talked about 
prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Now that word prove means test and examine, scrutinize to see whether a thing is genuine or not. Now if you ever went and, and tried to take maybe some gold in to see if maybe you wanted to sell an old gold ring or something, they will test it and they'll rub it on something and test it if it's gold or not. Because sometimes the markings are gone, you know, because there's a lot of fool's things out there. So it's like that. It means also to discern, distinguish, approve. My word study Greek in the New Testament said this, this about this word. This could not be used of Satan since he never wants us to experience God's approval. I thought that was a good point. He always tempts us with the intent to what? To make us fall. So this word is used in scripture as also like approved, alloweth, shall try, but try. Okay, but try all things. She'll prove all things. Hold fast to which is good. All right, now we'll go back to verse, um, now that verse 12. So, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Now, that word shame means, it means dishonorable, indicating that activities of which one would be ashamed are usually done in secret. How many would agree with that? If it, They must have some kind of a wit if they know they're going to do it in secret, so something's up there. Paul intimates that shameful things done in secret should not be aired in public by Christians. All right, and I'll, let me finish and I'll clarify. However, to allow the light of the gospel to shine upon the evil things that are perpetrated in darkness, but always, now here this is key, but always do it in a redemptive consideration of the vile person. In other words, it kind of goes back to my point. You don't want to ostracize them. You know, you want to work with them. So, and then it says this, every revelation of light should be for the redemption of the one who acts in darkness. Now, I know if you guys have been a Christian for a long time, they think we're self-righteous to begin with. So, and they are, and a lot of, they, they feel that. And so, we have to be very careful. We want to love, but yet, you know, there's times that we'll have to be stern and say, no, you're wrong, and I can prove it to you. And so, but they don't want you to speak or mention or point out with words or relate or recount in secret, things that were done in secretly. Now, a brother pointed this out, and I kind of alluded to it just a minute ago, that they that are doing things in the darkness actually are admitting to a degree that it is wrong. Otherwise, they wouldn't be hiding or doing things in darkness. How many would agree, agree with that? I kind of paraphrase that, but that's that's what it meant. So here's the, here's the deal. You folks are intelligent people. There's no doubt about it. So um, use your head. You know, use your head and your God-given mind and what he said, you know, some things are better left unsaid. How many would know that? You know, you just like if somebody's going to give you, you know, a lot of people want to tell you, oh, look what I did this weekend. And you're thinking, I really don't want to hear this, you know. And uh, just you got to be loving, but yet at the same time, you might have to be firm and say, don't. I, I'm not really, I don't really care to hear that. Because it does mess with your mind. How many would agree with that? We know there's things that we don't need to hear. Verse 13, but all things that are reproved are made manifest, how? By the light. For whatsoever does manifest is light. Now that word reproved here in this part of the, the message to prove and reprove, the same word as verse 11 as reprove. It means, and let me just recap, to convict, to prove on in, in the wrong, and thus to shame them. Now remember what I told you about shame. you got to be careful. All right. To convict of error or refute. Now a lot of times there's a, we can be tactful and point out, you're in error in this and do it lovingly. You know, how you do it? By the light. What's that? The light here is truth in its knowledge. Amen? It's a word called phos. It looks like phos, P-H-O-S. And it's, it's uh, associated with, with purity, purity is associated with it, moral and spiritual truth, spiritual light and knowledge, which enlightens the mind, hallelujah, soul or con, um, conscience, including the, also the idea of moral goodness, purity, and holiness of consequent reward and happiness. So the true knowledge of God and spiritual things. Both words light here in verse 13, there's two of them used, they have the same, the same interpretation, okay? And my word, uh, that was my word study of, of God, my friends, you'll never be wrong if you use and appropriate God's word correctly, amen? Use the proper application, all right? Because sometimes they use the same word and you have to apply it correctly, all right? I mentioned that last week, too. Verse 14. Wherefore, he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, 
and Christ shall give thee light. Awake. What's that mean? To raise up and stir up. Wake up from slugginess and don't be lethargic. Amen? Lethargic. Those that sleep us. Now that means, now here, this is, what does that mean in sleep? Does that mean we can't sleep? No. What this means is yield to sloth and sin. To be indifferent to one's salvation. Boy, did I like that when I hit that in Greek. To be indifferent to one's salvation. Wake thou sleepest what? From the dead. Nikros is what the word is. N-E-K. R-O-S, I believe I'm pronouncing it right. This is used metaphorically being spiritually dead, inactive in respect to doing what's right. And Christ shall give thee what? Light. All right? Christ will pour upon you the divine truth as the sun gives light to men aroused from sleep. You know, when this, the sun comes up, we wake up for the most part, we do. But this is kind of the same thing. Well, Christ will do it when he gives us the light. So, Brothers and sisters, you and I are living in a day when we have to be conscious about what is going around around us in everything because there's so much disinformation. There's so much lies going on in the media and stuff. And so I don't want you to walk in fear. But when you start to check things out, if it's true or not, do what the Bible says based on two or more witnesses. Go to people that know that don't have like a, a super in, invested interest in it, but they're just giving you information, all right? This is another thing. We talked last week about this verse, but it, it's very appropriate for this. In verse Thessalonians 5, 6, it says, Therefore, let us not sleep, remember I mentioned this, as others do, but let us watch and be sober. That's a good word. Amen? All right, I want to grab Proverbs over here. Um, 24, there's another thing that um, I've used um, when I spoke at a Right to Life one time. I used this particular group of scriptures, and, um, and I want to share it with you right now. I'm sorry I didn't have it up already. It says this, it's, 10, it's Proverbs 24, 10, 11, and 12. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Listen to this. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn to death, and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not. Does not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, does he not know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his work? Well, let's go back to the verse 10. If thou faint in the day of adversity. <laughs> How many believe that we're in the day of adversity right now? It's kind of crazy, isn't it? If thou faint, that means if thou sink, if thou relax, if you're going to sink down and be disheartened and withdraw, you know, it means to show oneself slack, but it also means you, this is kind of a legal term, we've heard this with our police, to cease and desist, to cease to desist. Through what? Adversity. What's that? Straits and trouble and distress and anguish. Thy strength or your power, your might is small in a narrow place. It's Tightness and distress and misery. You know, when you and I are in adversity, trouble or distress or whatever it is, it, even though it's not fun and hard, we need to have a Christian, that Christian tenacity and resolve and courage to wear the storm. Now, I've been on a call recently, and a brother pointed this out about bisons or buffaloes. I thought, and I looked it up to see if it was true. And here's what he said. The bison charges into the storm, okay, taking it head on and running right through it. This has the effect of reducing the amount of exposure to the storm. Now, I will admit, we have to use wisdom. <laughs> you don't want to run into something without having prudence, you know. But that's what they do. However, we need to have that resolve, my friends, not to give up when things are not good, like the times we're living in now. You know, stay the course, my friends, the Christian course. Don't let your, don't let the adversity define you. Amen? You can do it. Verse 11. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn to death and those that are ready to be slain. What's the word forbear mean? Hold back. Restrain and, with, and with, uh, withhold. So if thou withhold to deliver them that are drawn to death, that word deliver 
if thou forbear to deliver or snatch away or rescue or save or deliver from enemies or troubles or death. The word death here is dying in the realm of the dead, both of natural and violent means. Those that are ready to be slain or killed and slaughtered. Let's say hypothetically we're indifferent towards helping out what is in verse 11 it says. You know, well, I don't, you know, it's, it's not my job or, you know, that we'll let somebody else do that. I really don't know a whole lot about that or this and that. Well, verse 12, think about this. If thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, does he not that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, does he not know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his work? My friends, God knows what you know and what you don't know. Okay, so I remember telling an individual one time, this was many years ago, about partial birth abortion. And I said, and I, I didn't get into too much detail, but I basically described what the procedure was. They go, oh, I don't know about that. And I'm thinking, well, this is what's happening. We need to know. When we vote, how many would agree with that? Now, the voting process is over for the most part. We need to know. We say, we knew it not. Or we, did, we didn't know. We didn't find out and discern. We didn't have any knowledge of that. Really? Well, what about him that ponders the heart? What's that mean? He measures. He weighs. He estimates and be measured out what we do know. The heart is the seat of emotions in, our, in the seat of our will. How many would agree with that? That's where it comes from. Jesus talked about that. Doesn't he consider it? Doesn't he understand and observe and discern and regard? And, and they that keepeth your soul, or he that, excuse me, and that keepeth your soul, that nephish, that's what it means, nephish, that's our emotions and passions, activity of the mind, activity of our will, our character. So let me ask you a question. I kind of already alluded to it. Do you think God knows what we really know? Yeah, you can rest assured he does know. And shall he not, what, render to every man according to his work? Shall not he return to every man according to his work? All right. Now, so, you know, there's things. I, you know, I think when I was younger, there was times that I didn't want to know about stuff because I thought, by not knowing, you wouldn't be held accountable. You ever been like that when you're young? Well, you know what? God knows that's not right either. We're in disobedience. He got a hold of me on that. But here's the thing, okay? What I want you to do, my friend, is you're the heads of your home. Know what you know and know what you're about to get involved in. Okay, we got inoculations coming up and vaccines. Do your study. Do your homework. Find out what's involved. I would, you know, it's being because I'm your pastor and friend, I want you to know. Then when you make a decision, at least you make it intelligently. Don't just assume things are this way or that way. A lot of times they're not, and sometimes they are. But it's up to us to discern. Amen. I'm using that as an example. It could be anything. You know, some people do flu shots. Some people don't. Whatever. But at least if you find out, you'll know. And then, you know, when it comes to your children or grandchildren or whatever, then you know, and that goes with anything that we do. You know, there are, like, things that are connected with Planned Parenthood. I don't want nothing to do with them, okay? Because they kill babies. And so I try to stay away from anything like that. And again, you know, maybe they'll take this YouTube off. I don't know, but at least I'm telling you the truth. So anyways, God bless you, and I hope this is going to help you. Use these scriptures. And if you, just, I would encourage you to look in the Greek and find out for yourself what they say. And there's other Greek studies that you can find, and it really encapsulates the whole thing, and it really tells the tale. So, Father, thank you. My heart, Father, is that we all know what we're getting into. I pray, Father, that you give us wisdom. Show us understanding of what to do, what not to do, and what to get involved in. Father, we, I love these people. I don't want no harm to fall on them or their families. So we, we praise you, and I ask that you bless these people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Folks, God bless you. And think about what I said. Amen. God bless.